There's so many parts of my childhood that I feel like my parents reminded us to be conscious of where we came from, our lineage, and always to be proud of that. And then you also have the, on the other hand, I mean, I grew up with, you know, a ball in my hand in a sense where we weren't really given the option of whether or not to play sport. It was more so of which sport do you want to play? And we were always really encouraged to be active. When I was a kid, we like stayed outside till like the streetlights came on. Mm -hmm. So there was this um, importance put on not just being active, um, but also, you know, being healthy in a sense. And so in that, how did you find fencing? I, um, again, we was playing all these different sports as a kid, and we had a really hard time finding, like, long sleeve tops and spandex to go underneath team uniforms. And I remember um, from a really early age spending a lot of time in, like, models with my mom, being like, no, that doesn't match, or like, no, that doesn't fit. And um, we happened to be at a stoplight in my hometown in Maplewood, New Jersey, and we saw fencing in the, in the local high school. And at the time, we weren't familiar with the sport, but we saw that the athletes had on long jackets and long pants. So my mom's like, I don't know what it is, but I want you to try it out. <laughs> and that's how, so great. yeah, that's how I, I started fencing. I, my mom signed me up for a lesson. She, you know, is so resourceful. She found this, this fencing club, um, which really turned out not to be a club. It was this guy's garage. And uh, he was like, you know, the maestro or like the, the premier coach in our town. And my dad took me to my first lesson. And we came home. My dad was like, no, like we're not doing this. Um, because it was just far and it was weird. This, there was this random guy in a garage <laughs> teaching me how to fence. My dad was like, absolutely not. <laughs> but I, um, you know, also being resourceful, like my mom, went online and I googled like you know the top 10 schools in the country and they all had fencing teams I'm from a really large family I'm one of five kids uh, my as you'll read in the book um, my dad's a retired drug detective my mom's a retired teacher I had to be resourceful with how to pay for school so I um, saw the top 10 schools had fencing teams and I was like oh yeah I'm doing this mm -hmm. so it was just really a means to an end in the beginning wow and um, did you come to love it I'm not sure if I've ever loved fencing. I don't know. That, I get that question a lot, and I can't say that I've ever loved it. Mm -hmm. there, there are parts about the sport that I've, that I've grown an affinity for, and for me, I've always been really drawn to the people. I was you know, head over heels for my high school fencing team. It mm. was this space where we, I mean, we were winning all the time, and it's <laughs> easy to be happy when you're winning. I mean, it was... We, we had ups the entire time I was on the team. I mean, we won almost every state championship. It was mm -hmm. just this really good energy. Everyone was really supportive. Whether you were, um, whether you were on the strip actually uh, providing tangible wins for the team, or you were a cheerleader, you were on the sidelines. Like my first few years, I was just cheering my teammates on. But either way, it was just this really supportive, inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. And um, then after high school, or at some point in high school, I discovered the non, a nonprofit I fence for in New York City, the Peter Rusbrick Foundation, which really has become more family than it has anything. And a lot of that has to do with um, just the nurturing environment it has created. Mm -hmm. I discovered the foundation at 16. Someone told me that there were black people who fenced here in New York City. And I was like, that's offensive. But I Googled it and mm -hmm. found them. Um, and that's how I joined the, the Peter Rusbrick Foundation. It was, it was really uh, out of necessity. I mm -hmm. feel like I needed to be around people who look like me in order to grow in the sport. It's mm -hmm. hard to feel, to have that sensation of being ostracized and being labeled as different mm -hmm. uh, day in and day out. 